The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the wonderful new Kraft Deluxe Slices everybody's talking about. Have you discovered this marvelous new way to buy cheese in slices? Kraft Deluxe Slices are different from any sliced cheese you've ever had in your life before. They're perfect slices, cut, wrapped, and sealed by Kraft. A little later on, I'll tell you all about the amazing new Kraft Deluxe Slices. Well, it won't be long now. Just a few more days and the great Gildersleeve's niece, Marjorie, heads for the altar to become the blushing bride of Bronco Thompson. Say, isn't this the great man coming up the street? Sure is. By golly, the water commissioner's home from the office early today. I wonder what's up. Oh, promise me that someday you and I... Hey, Unc! Yeah. Oh, hello, Leroy. Can I go to the wedding rehearsal tonight? Can I, Unc? Well, I don't know. Oh, let me go. I've never seen a wedding. But this isn't going to be the wedding, my boy. They're just going to practice. I've never seen that either. I ought to go, Unc. It'll be part of my education. Yeah. Education? Sure. Every little bit helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the photographers from Look Magazine are going to be there getting ready to shoot pictures of the wedding. I suppose you should go. Oh, boy, keen, Unc. Yeah. Let's go in and see how your little sister's getting along, huh? After you, Unc. Yeah. Well, thank you, Leroy. What's happened to the boy? <laughs> that you, Miss Gilsley? Yeah, I'm home, Bertie. Where's Marjorie? She's in the back bedroom. Land alive, the way that girl's been working today. She's just been sailing around here. Well, she's excited, Bertie. Yes, sir. She's been zipping through the kitchen, out to the garage, zipping back in, zipping out again. What have you been doing, Bertie? I've been ducking. <laughs> <laughs> she don't want any help, Mr. Gillsleeve. She's getting ready for the honeymoon trip, and she wants to do it herself. Well, you know how brides are, Bertie. Yes, sir. <laughs> you ought to see her, Unc. She has on some old beaten-up slacks and one of your old sweatshirts. Her hair is hanging down in her eyes. Boy, Bronco should see her. He'd join the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> now, my boy. She even scared me. <laughs> Is that you, Uncle Moore? Here she comes. Well, when'd you get home, Unky? Ah! Leroy! <laughs> What's the matter with him? Oh, no, nothing. Pay no attention to him, my dear. He was just making fun of your... Oop! What an outfit. Well, I've been working, Unky. Can't expect me to wear an evening gown when I'm digging suitcases out of that dusty old garage. No, I guess not. I don't know why they had to build a garage way out in the back. Seems like I had to lug those suitcases a mile. Look at my shoes. Those are shoes? Yep. <laughs> well, it is quite a ways back to the garage. Gee, if Bronco could only see her now. Oh, stop it. Society Flash. Marjorie Forrester, the blushing bride, was devastating in gorgeous prune-colored slacks decorated with mud. <laughs> and wearing the new ankle-length sweatshirt, courtesy of the uptown bowling alley. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Leroy, that will do. Uncle Mort, if that's Bronco, I'll die. Hello, Bertie. Is Marjorie here? There he is, Marjorie. You're dead. <laughs> well, I can't let him see me like this. What am I going to do? Go stand in a corner. We'll tell him you're a mop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leroy. You've had your fun. Now go outside. Go on. Scat. Okay. And he was so polite before. Miss Marjorie, Mr. Bronco's here. Well, tell him I can't see him, Bertie. Tell him Don't anything. you do anything of the kind, Bertie. You're being very childish about this, Marjorie. After all, Bronco isn't here to pick you up for a date. This is the man you're going to marry. There's a difference. But, Uncle, Uncle, he's never seen me like this in these terrible old clothes. What'll he think? Oh, my goodness. Marjorie Bronco is marrying you, not a three-piece ensemble from Hogan Brothers. If he loves you, he won't care if you're wearing a gunny sack. But this awful sweatshirt from a bowling alley. There's nothing awful about it. I won a tournament in that sweatshirt. <laughs> All right, Bronco, she'll be there in a minute Well, I suppose you're right, Unky Clothes shouldn't make any difference Of course not, my dear In fact, here's a chance to prove to yourself that Bronco really loves you Just go wash your little face, powder your nose, and then come in just as you are All right, hope you're right, Unky Sure, I'm right Silly girl, worrying about Bronco getting cold feet <laughs> He's so crazy about her, he doesn't know which way he's going that boy is numb with love. <laughs> well, 
Oh, hello, Bronco. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Say, I'm glad I caught you. Caught me? Yeah, I'm on a merry-go-round, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, don't let it worry you, my boy. The groom is always a little dizzy before the wedding. <laughs> oh, no, it's not that. The fellow who is going to be my best man has gone out of town. Oh? Huh? Mr. Gildersleeve, do you suppose Judge Hooker would stand up for me? The judge? Why, he'd be tickled to death, Bronco. I'll go over to his house this afternoon and ask him. Oh, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm kind of mixed up. I've watched other people get married, but gosh, this time it's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you, all right. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, you may not believe this, but my heart just stops beating every time I think about Marjorie and how beautiful she is. Well, how beautiful? Now, wait. I feel like I'm marrying an angel. With stars in her hair. Yeah, but... In a gossamer gown of purest gold. Zeke. Hello, Bronco, darling. Oh, hello, Marge. I mean... Marge? <laughs> Don't I look dreadful, Bronco? Well, no. No, I mean, you look fine. Wonderful. What happened? <laughs> Well, uh, Bronco, Marjorie's been working, getting the little suitcases ready for your honeymoon trip. <laughs> Isn't that a cute little sweatshirt? <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Bronco. I shouldn't have let you see me like this, and just before the wedding rehearsal, too. Oh, that's all right, Marge. You look just like you always do. <laughs> Watch it, Bronco. I mean, you always look good to me. Do I, Bronco? Sure. The boy's a genius. He slipped out of that one. <laughs> well, I have to hurry and get dressed. The rehearsal starts at 8 o'clock, and we have to be at the church at 7.30, Bronco. Oh, gosh, that reminds me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, I forgot what I came for. I'm on a merry-go-round. <laughs> well, stay on it, my boy. Maybe you'll catch a ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I came to ask if I could borrow your car. My back tire blew out, and I've got to be at the railroad station at 4 o'clock. Railroad station? Yeah, to pick up Hazel. Hazel? Who's Hazel? Hazel McCoy. She's a girl I used to know, a kind of a friend of the family. She's coming clear from Miami Beach for the wedding. Isn't that swell? Yes, that's very nice Yes, yeah, certainly Good to have old friends at a wedding Yes, sir Here are the keys to the Studebaker, my boy It's back in the garage Oh, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve I'll see you later, Marge You'll have to choke it Gee, that's funny Never told me about a girl named Hazel Well, he probably forgot, my dear He's on a merry-go-round But why didn't he tell me about her? Oh, for Marjorie, you can't expect him to tell you about all the girls he ever knew A man forgets I know lots of girls that I can't remember <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind so much if he hadn't seen me in this awful outfit Uncle Mort, what do you suppose this Hazel McCoy looks like? Well, she's probably as plain as an old shoe, my dear He said she was a family friend Probably a book collector like Mr. Thompson I wonder if she's a blonde No Well, why was he in such a hurry to pick her up? Well, he didn't want to miss the train now, Marjorie, don't start getting any silly ideas. I guess you're right, Unky. I am being silly. Sure, Bronco's safe. <laughs> you never have to worry about that boy. Now, you run up and get ready for the rehearsal while I go over and see Judge Hooker. Why Judge Hooker? For the wedding, my dear. He's going to be the best man. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, what a combination. A Bronco and an old goat. <laughs> <laughs> Gildy, I simply don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything, Judge. Just be there. Of course, you may have to hold Bronco up during the ceremony. Well, I'll take care of him, Gildy. I'll bring along my acetate bag. Uh, it has great restorative powers for such occasions. Yes, yes. Well, the rehearsal's at 8 o'clock tonight, Judge, over at the church. You can count on me, Gildy. My, I've never been so deeply touched. Mm -hmm. What finer gesture of friendship than to be invited to stand at the side of one about to catapult himself into the tossing seas of matrimony. Judge, this is a wedding, not a shipwreck. <laughs> it's a great moment in a young man's life, Gildy. I should be proud to be standing on the deck when they launch their little ship upon the sea of life. Oh, my goodness. How's Marjorie standing up under the approach of the great day, Gildy? Well, she's a little upset at the moment, Judge. Very cute, though. She's worried about Bronco and another girl. A little jealous, I think. Oh, the green-eyed monster. Yeah, <laughs> Bronco barred my car to go to the depot. He's picking up an old girlfriend who came out for the wedding. 
No girlfriend? Friend of the family, Judge. Well, what's the difference, Gildy? Every girl is a friend of somebody's family. <laughs> now, don't you start in on this horse. Ah, well, well, I'm sure a pretty girl like Marjorie has nothing to worry about. That's what I tell her, Judge. But when Bronco came over this afternoon, Marjorie had been working, and she looked like, well, she wasn't dressed up. And you know how girls are, Judge. Oh, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I kept telling her that this friend of Bronco's was probably the plainest creature imaginable. No competition whatsoever. Why, certainly. Now, if she looked like this... Look at this evening's paper, Gildy. What's this? See the picture of the girl on the front page? The one in the bathing suit? Well, nice. Now, if Bronco's old girlfriend looked like that, Marjorie might have reason to be concerned. Yeah. She, what a blonde fire hazard. <laughs> I uh, don't have my glasses, Gildy. Who is the young lady? Oh, probably some movie starlet. See what it says here. Miss Everglades of 1946 arrives today to be guest of Broadmoor residence. Miss Hazel McCoy. Oh, what's the matter, Gilda? Out of the way, Judge. You've got to get home and snag the evening paper before Marjorie sees it. I don't understand. Do you know this blonde bombshell? I don't know the bomb, Judge, but I'm going to. It's falling right on our little house. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. You know, they say seeing's believing, and that's why I'd like you to stop at your grocer's dairy case when you're shopping tomorrow and take home a package marked Kraft Deluxe Slices. Then you'll see for yourself that a package so neat really can hold eight big, easy-to-separate slices of cheese, Kraft Deluxe Slices. Here's really fine pasteurized processed cheese that's cut into generous slices, wrapped eight big slices to each neat half-pound package, and sealed right in the spick-and-span Kraft plant. Protected by Kraft, every Kraft Deluxe cheese slice is clean and sanitary, and every slice perfect, too. No slivers or broken pieces, no dried-out edges, but each cheese slice a perfect square of mellow good eating. With rich-tasting Kraft Deluxe slices, you can fix a variety of delicious cheese snacks and sandwiches, even a fancy cheese tray, as quick as a wink and just as easy. You can get Kraft Deluxe Slices in any one of your four Kraft favorites. Kraft American, Pimento, Swiss, and Sharp Old English brand. Take home your favorite and see for yourself how one package so neat really does hold eight big perfect slices, a whole half pound of delicious cheese. Once you discover Kraft Deluxe Slices, you'll never buy cheese slices any other way. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. If I can just get the paper before Bertie does. No reason to worry about Bronco, but Marjorie won't understand. Ooh, why did I ever get myself into this? It's not my fault. Quit kidding yourself, Gildersleeve. It is too your fault. You encourage Marjorie to let Bronco get her all messed up. Fine thing on the day of the wedding rehearsal. Oh, almost past the house. Zeke, no paper. I'm too late. You. Hazel McCoy, I mean... <laughs> where's the evening paper, Leroy? Bertie came out and got it. What's all the excitement, huh? You wouldn't understand, my boy. Anybody seen Bronco? Sure, he just drove in the driveway. He did? Well, good old Bronco. Uh, uh, yes, sir. There's the car back in the garage. Hey, what's going on around here today? Everybody's on a merry-go-round. Never mind, my boy. Everything's going to be all right. You run along now. I'm going back and lock up the garage. Uh, getting too old for that kind of running. Silly, too, getting upset about Bronco and that girl. Just a family friend, like he said. <sighs> well, it's all part of the excitement that goes with the wedding. Bronco and Marjorie are probably in the parlor right now, billing and cooing. Bronco working up an appetite for dinner. <laughs> I'll lock up the old garage and go in and relax. There. Oh, brother, what an afternoon. That you, Mr. Gillsleeve? That's right, Bertie. Where's Bronco? 
That's what Miss Marjorie would like to know. Sure. What? Isn't he here? No, sir. You better go in and see Miss Marjorie. She's on the wall path. But, Bertie, the car's in the garage. Maybe the car's in the garage, but you better go see Miss Marjorie. There's a girl that just seen the evening paper. Oh, but Bertie, Bronco has to be here. Maybe he has to be here, but he ain't here. Nothing here but the evening paper. What? You seen the evening paper, Mr. Gilfley? Uh, yes, Bertie, but... Uh... Oh, Miss Marjorie, ready to get married, and here comes the evening paper. I know, Bertie, but... Oh, Miss Marjorie! Uh... <laughs> Goodness sake. I no sooner get off the merry-go-round than I'm right back on it again. Uncle Mort! You're coming, my dear. <laughs> Paper, Uncle Moore. Yes, Marge. I mean, there's nothing to get excited about. The car's in the garage. Bronco's here. No, he isn't. He's out somewhere with that blonde, Miss Everglades of 1946. Lost in a swamp. <laughs> <laughs> but he can't be, my dear. The car's here. He probably just walked down to the service station to pick up his car. You think so, Unky? Certainly. Here, dry your tears, my dear. If you're going to marry Bronco, you've got to learn to trust him. That's the most important part of a marriage. All right, Unky. Yeah. A man and his wife have to believe in each other, Marjorie. Faith and trust are just as important as love. I know, Unky. But, but... But what? Where's Bronco? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hi, Bertie. <laughs> oh, Leroy. Jump up behind me like that. What's wrong? We got nerves in this house. I thought you was Mr. Bronco. Now, for corn's sake, hasn't he showed up yet? No, he ain't. Miss Marjorie pacing up and down, looking out the windows. Mr. Gilsley pacing up and down. It's going to be time to go to the church for the wedding rehearsal, and no Mr. Bronco. Oh, he'll come back when it's dinner time. Paul, Miss Marjorie. <laughs> Is that Bronco coming up the street? Huh? No, that's Rumson Bullard with his alligator briefcase. <laughs> it's almost six o'clock, Unky. Where's Bronco? Oh, Marjorie, he'll come back. Bertie's starting dinner. He's bound to be here. On the night of our wedding rehearsal, he leaves me. Marjorie, please stop wailing. He probably had to wait for his tire to be fixed. He's only been gone a couple of hours. And that blonde from the Everglades. Why didn't she stay there? Now, my dear, that girl means nothing to Bronco. How could he be interested in her? Unky, look at the picture. Zeke. <laughs> I mean, why should he? I mean, he wouldn't. Well, I'm not even going to think about it. That's the girl. If he comes back, he'll come back. If he doesn't, he doesn't. That's the spirit, my dear. But, Unky... Yeah? Where's Bronco? Yeah. <laughs> It's a quarter of seven. What happened to Lover Boy? Leroy? <laughs> he must be somewhere, Unky. Yeah, he's got to be somewhere. Why don't you call a gas station? I called the gas station. He's not there. Well, too bad. Guess he flew the coop. Mm. Any word from Mr. Brown Coop, Miss Marjorie? Not yet, Bertie. He's gone. Leroy, stop saying he's gone. How do you know he's gone? Well, he isn't here. If he isn't here, he's gone. Yeah. Oh, Miss Marjorie! <laughs> Oh, what a household. Darn Bronco, anyway. Where is that boy? Say, maybe took Everglades, I mean Hazel, back to Broadmoor, to his family. Sure. Oh, do you think so, Unky? Certainly. Give me the telephone. I'll call dear Mother Thompson. <coughs> it, well, Mrs. Bullard on the line. They could go on all night. <laughs> Holy cow, what's everybody so excited about? Leroy, go sit on the front porch. You wait here, Marjorie. I'll run down to Peavy's drugstore and use the payphone. I don't think he's at home. No, Marjorie. Oh, Unky. Don't tell me I know. Where's Bronco? <laughs> hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Okay, the man from Look Magazine tells me they're going to run a lot of pictures of Marjorie's wedding next week. Yeah, that's right, Peavy. Would you like to have me save some copies for you? About 20, Peavy. But right now, I just want to use your telephone. We have a little problem at our house. Give me a couple of nickels, please. 
Two nickels, Mr. Gildersleeve? I gave you a dime, Peavy. Well, there's no harm in asking. <laughs> now, if I can just get into this darn... Be careful as you can getting in, Mr. Gildersleeve. The booth is right next to the perfume counter. Yeah. All right, Peavy. Large man got in there the other day and sneezed. What of it? Broke two dollars worth of toilet water. <laughs> All right, Peavy. I didn't get in here to sneeze. I've got to make a very important phone call. I go right ahead. Operator, get me Broadmoor 2242. Everything all right at home, I hope. I don't know, Peavy. Bronco's disappeared. You don't say. Yeah, he went down to the depot to pick up an old girlfriend. That Miss Everglades on the front page of the newspaper. Oh. It's not that at all, Peavy. A young man like Bronco would look twice at a girl dressed like she was. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, for goodness. Did you get your party, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, they probably left for the church. Well, that's too bad. Are you getting out of the phone booth now, Mr. Gildersleeve? PV, quit worrying about your toilet water. <laughs> I'm not going to sneeze. <laughs> Darn operator didn't give me my nickel back. Well, sometimes the nickel drops down and people don't hear it. It does? Oh, I find quite a few nickels that way. <laughs> Petey, I can't see in this coin slot. S dusty. Your son died. Break anything, Peavy? No, I was holding on to the bottle. Uh, well, I have to go home and tell Marjorie I couldn't find him. No, I wish I could help you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thank you, Peavy. Can't understand this. Why the boy should drop suddenly out of sight this way. Peavy, if you went down to the depot to pick up a girl like Hazel, a friend of the family, where would you go? Well. <laughs> <laughs> well? No use, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mrs. Peavy doesn't have any friends like that. <laughs> All right, Peavy. Good night. No use, Uncle Mort. I'm going to call off the wedding rehearsal. Now, don't do anything hasty, my dear. It's only 7.30. I'm going to call off the wedding, too. Marjorie. You can't call it off now. I already took my bath. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, go out in the kitchen with Bertie. I was out there. She told me to come in here with you. Yes. I'll never get married. I'll never trust another man as long as I live. Now, Marjorie, be fair. Something must have happened to the boy. I know what happened. He got cold feet. <laughs> Leroy, go out and sit on the front porch. I've been sitting on the front porch. Well, go sit there some more. Oh, for corn's sake. Uh. Oh, Unky, it all started when I walked into, walked into this room and Bronco saw me in those terrible clothes. Oh, no. And then he went down to the depot and saw that, that bathing beauty. Marjorie, Bronco wouldn't leave you. Well, where is he? I wish I knew. All I know, my dear, is that Bronco loves you. He wouldn't push you aside for a bathing suit, a doll face. Then where is he? Marjorie, if you say that once Excuse more... Excuse me, Miss Marjorie. Any word from Mr. Bronco? Not a word, Bertie. Oh, Miss Marjorie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is the end, Uncle Mort. I don't care what you or anybody else says. I'm never going to speak to Bronco again. I'm never going to see him again. Now, Marjorie? I'm going to pack up and leave. I'll go to Washington and be a census taker. If... <laughs> Now, just a minute. Now, don't try to talk me out of anything. I'm through. I'm through with Bronco and you and everybody. <laughs> oh, me! Oh, shut up, everybody. <laughs> Great Scott, what's that? Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm here. Bronco, uh, Marjorie, it's Bronco. He's here. Marge! Oh, Marge. Bronco Thompson, what happened to you? For goodness sake, look at your clothes, boy. You look like you'd fallen into a threshing machine. I had to crawl out a window. Crawl out a window? Oh, you... Yeah, take it easy, Marjorie. Bronco Thompson, where is that blonde? Blonde? Oh, Hazel. Oh, she and her husband and the two children went to a hotel. Two children? <laughs> you see, I was right all the time. But, Bronco, where have you been? Where have I been? I brought your uncle's car back and drove it in, and I was sitting there for a second thinking... And somebody locked the garage. <laughs> the uh, garage, eh? Oh, Bronco, baby, have you been in the garage all this time? Yeah. 
I yelled and yelled, but it's way back there. Nobody heard me. Oh, Bronco, you poor darling. Yeah. <laughs> Baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, Bernie, put the dinner on. Bronco's back. Get ready for the wedding, folks. Start up the merry-go-round again. Leroy. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be with us again very shortly. Simply amazing. That's what women are saying about the neat package marked Kraft Deluxe Slices. And it is simply amazing how one package so neat holds eight big sandwich-sized slices, a whole half pound of wonderful pasteurized processed cheese. And it's mellow good cheese that's cut, wrapped, and sealed right in the spick-and-span Kraft plant. So every slice is clean and sanitary and absolutely perfect. Kraft Deluxe Cheese Slices are easy to separate, too, for really quick snacks and sandwiches. Tomorrow, look in your grocer's dairy case for Kraft Deluxe Cheese Slices. The rehearsal went well, though. It's going to be a beautiful wedding. Hey, Unc. Hmm? What is it, my boy? Look at Marge and Bronco out on the porch. Huh? They've been standing there saying good night for half an hour. Yeah, cute. They must be goomy. <laughs> Why do they have to say good night 50 times? <clears throat> well, someday you'll understand, my boy. Takes a lot of good nights to say good night when you're in love. <laughs> good night, Marge. Good night, Bronco. There they go again. <laughs> well, my boy, this is their last time to say good night on the porch. Next week they'll be married. May 10th. Hope all our friends will join us for the wedding. Good night, darling. Good night, dear. Kiss me, Unc. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jim Doyle saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday for Marjorie's Wedding on the Great Gildersleeve Show. And folks, there's another treat in store for you next Wednesday on NBC. Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, starring in their fine program, The Halls of Ivy, written by my old friend Don Quinn, join our Wednesday night entertainment lineup. We'd like to welcome the Colemans and invite all of you to listen to The Halls of Ivy, too. Good night. <laughs> Which suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or a sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like Kraft prepared mustard. For there are two kinds. Salad mustard, tangy but smooth, and Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. This is America's number one advertising medium, NBC.